Hello and welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for tuning in to day three of our Adobe Express Bootcamp this week. I'm Jordan Dene Ellis. If we haven't met yet, I am a community manager for Adobe Express, which basically means if you have any questions at all about Adobe Express at any point, feel free to at me. I am at Jordan Dene Ellis all over the internet and I'm here to help you figure out how to use this wonderful program that we all love. If you didn't catch day one and two, you can find the replays on the Adobe Express YouTube, but we went over like the basics of what Adobe Express is and how to set up your personal brand, which is what we've been doing for um, the rest of this week using that personal brand. And then yesterday, use that and some few other fun templates to create playlists so that you can make like custom playlist covers for your Spotify or wherever you listen to music. And then today I'm going to walk through how to choose templates because Adobe Express is Adobe's quick and easy design tool. And that means it's full of lots of great templates that we can use, but sometimes knowing what to pick or like what works best for the project or just some like tips and tricks um, that hopefully will help you choose the right template for your project. I wanted to say quickly too, if you know me, you know this, I'm not a professional designer. I didn't go to art school. I hang out with designers a lot, so I have thankfully absorbed a bunch of information from them, but um, I'm going to do my best to relay my best design knowledge, but I'm going to be honest, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll do my best and hopefully I can help you out. But if you are a designer, you may know more than me, which is fine. Feel free to chime in in the chat if I'm uh, getting anything wrong or you have more design info you want to share with us. Speaking of chat, hello, Annika, Haiti, Tim, Llama Mama. Thank you so much for joining. Good to see you all. Um, I'm actually kind of curious in the chat how many folks have used Adobe Express before and if you've ever tried out templates because um, I know not everyone is used to working with templates and I think they're really fun. So this is the homepage of Adobe Express. If you have never seen it, this is where you'll land if you go to express.adobe.com. There's also a mobile app, so you can do this on your phone or tablet. Um, you can just download Adobe Express. I kind of prefer working on desktop, especially if I'm doing a more intricate project, but I also really like that my projects sync across both. So sometimes I'll like build a template or start it on desktop and then quickly switch it out um, on my phone if I like need to do something for Instagram or something like that. So um, Yesenia says, I have used templates, but not as much as I would like to. If there are any particular questions about templates or like anything you want me to help you find on this stream, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I am going to walk through the first places that you can find um, templates. So right here at the top of Adobe Express, these are all custom sizes. So if you open from here, these are actually going to open as blank projects in this size. So this would be a logo size, flyer size, Instagram story size. You can go through to all of like kind of the major um, project sizes. Anki says, I have to say I've never used it, but it seems great. I'm not a template person and I love to create in Photoshop and Illustrator. So something that's really fun is you can actually bring assets from Photoshop and Illustrator into Adobe Express. So if you made like custom design assets or shapes, or I've made like, or I haven't made, I've had my design friends help me make like frames, um, for example, like for my podcast. So I can bring different elements that are custom into Adobe Express and then use the quick and easy remixing tools, um, which I will show off today. I have used templates, but I do have some questions. Feel free to drop them and I will do my best to answer them. So, okay, these are all pre kind of sized templates right here at the top. If we scroll down, I mentioned this in our first day, but just to give it another shout out, we have quick actions for Adobe Express on the homepage. And these are like one button tools that are really, really helpful. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend it. You can also search by like the type of project. So if you are looking for a quick shot, 
quick action related to images. You can see we have like one button resize, remove backgrounds, converting to different file types, cropping. You can create a QR code. There's lots of stuff you can do with PDF, combining files, editing text and images, converting to and from. Um, and then popular has like the most popular ones. Um, more folks in the chat saying they have used templates and have questions. Yeah, feel free to ask. So when you sign up and sign into Adobe Express, you will be asked a couple questions that will um, inform what this templates for you is. So right here, I'm getting looks like lots of holiday templates um, for holidays that are coming up. I can also Adobe Express knows that I run a small business in my part time. So I have some logos and stuff here. So like scrolling down through, this is kind of the what's new in templates. So we have popular templates, stories, that type of thing. If you just want to see kind of what's up, I also really like looking at this, even if I'm not necessarily making a project right now. Um, these are, it's just kind of nice to see what's trending, I guess. I am not a trend follower, but it is fun to see what's happening, um, especially because, like I said, I'm not a designer. I'm not really up on like what the design community is doing. So this is a way I can sort of like our Adobe designers who create these templates know all of that so we don't have to. Um, so I can come and just look. Question in the chat, can we improve the existing logos? Do you mean like the logo templates or the, we showed off a little bit the Adobe Express logo maker on day one. Let me know what specifically you're asking about logos and I'll see if I can help you. Okay, so these are the default templates. We also have a search bar at the top. Um, and something that I think is really fun, let's just type in, I'm just gonna type in something really vague like stars and see what we get because I wanted to show when you are in search, there are categories over on the side. So if you want to find a template by theme, like if you're looking, you know, there's a new, maybe someone had a new baby or it's a birthday, but you're not sure exactly what kind of template you're looking for. Sometimes I get ideas by checking out the categories on the side. So right now it's like, okay, you can do an Instagram post. I can make a card. We have stories, posters, presentation graphics, collages, book covers. Like there are so many, so many templates in Adobe Express. And there are times where I'm not even really sure what I want to make. So I think it's really fun to come over to the side and just see what the options are. This week, we're talking about using Adobe Express for your personal brand and projects. So normally I talk about small business things as a small business owner. And I think there is so much that Adobe Express does really well for business. But I think there's also a lot of stuff that is really fun just for like regular life. So like, for example, I'm in a big digital collage moment right now. I think these are really fun. So a template like this, that is um, like, I could probably find a way to use this for my business, but I think this is just like a really fun thing to remix for myself. Sometimes I just do digital collages as a way to give myself a little bit of a creative outlet. So even if you don't run a brand or business like officially, I think there are a ton of fun projects that you can do in Adobe Express. Speaking of that, oops, let's see if it will let me back in. Um, speaking of that, I was going to show off my personal projects because we did, we've gone through the homepage. I'll just quickly go back into brands to show off the brand that we created. So these are my actual, like this is my small nerdy clothing brand. This is when I was freelance social media-ing during the pandemic. Um, these are some of the brands that I was working for. And this is my magazine. And this is the personal brand that we made on day one. Um, 
So you can have actual business brands, but if I click into this, we made this together, but this is just like some of my favorite colors. These aren't real logos. They're just like really fun kind of stickers that I want to put in my projects. And I just chose a favorite font. So you can do, you know, brands for businesses and you can also do brands that are just things you like and either is totally valid. We also popped into libraries, which is where you can save your favorite templates. So I have business libraries, which I showed off um, like this is go into this one. This is a library that I made for my actual brand. So this is like Instagram stories and carousels and like podcast episode images, promo for things. But you can also use it for your personal brand to just keep track of templates that you um, want to use. So this is a library that I made for our stream yesterday with a bunch of different playlist inspirations. I just have some favorite templates, some other template inspo. Um, and I want to show off projects, which we haven't dived into yet. These are just your past projects. So this is like the playlist projects that I started pulling together the template. This is the playlist cover we made or the covers we made yesterday. And talking about using templates for your personal brand and projects, there are lots of really creative ways that you can, you can use the templates here for your own things. So just like a very quick overview, some of these are extremely silly, but to show you the types of things you can make in Adobe Express, um, I made a collage of celebrities who have the same birthday as me on my birthday this year. So that's what this template is. For my birthday party, I had these like little activity stations. So I made signs that I printed out and framed, I made my birthday party invitation. This is one of my favorites that I'll open. Um, I'm a Philadelphia girl and I made a gritty themed bathroom. And so this is the mood board that I put together with like the color palette and literally bought um, all the things in here. So that is what my home bathroom mood board is. I mentioned in one of our earlier streams that I'm also really into themed parties, which I think is really fun. So this is a template that this is just a straight up Adobe Express template for a New Year's party. And then if we go back, I can show you that I remixed it for a murder mystery party. Um, so that was like taking a template and remixing it for, you know, a couple different ways. Also did a menu in the same theme, just different color schemes so I could print it out. I've made like silly Instagram posts. This is a presentation from when I was in grad school last year baby shower invitations, collages again um, with celebrities that I'm in love with. So you can do lots of personal and kind of silly things with projects. And I just wanted to, or with templates, I wanted to show off some of the ones that I have made. But let's think about some different projects that you can make for your own personal brand. Like we've talked about Personal brands can be a whole range of things. So some folks have branded themselves almost as like a mini business. So if you're a blogger or an influencer or an author. Um, you can, you can create, you know, a brand and work on your social posts. You can create book covers, those types of things. Something that I love doing is for Instagram, oops, you can make all types of social media um, assets. So I'm going to start with, let's see if we type in Instagram reel cover because Instagram reels are something that are really fun to use. I use them for business a lot. But you can also use lots of Instagram stories or reels for your personal life too. So let's see what we have here. Um, there are lots of great options of things that you could use for your personal brand. Let's see what we have. 
this could be remixed. This is things I wish were actually taught during Black History Month. So you can fill, you know, you could post this, fill this out. Um, can also change the text to be for any topic you want. There are AMAs, which I think lots of businesses do, but you can definitely do like sometimes I do AMAs. I'm stuck at airports a lot. And so I and I've seen my friends do this, do like AMA. I'm stuck, you know, I'm at an airport for three hours or I'm on this bus or, you know, ask me anything. Um, those are super fun. If you have traveled, I know that lots of times folks put their Instagram stories into highlights and then you can create um, Instagram highlight covers, I think is what they're called. Like on the homepage of your Instagram, you can brand those so that they all look cohesive, which I think would be a fun thing to play with right now. Just scrolling down to see the rest of what we have. <clears throat> we have some more playlist covers, some logos. There was some talk of logos in the chat. You can create your own logos here too. And that doesn't have to be like super serious for a business. It can be like you can make a logo for a birthday party and then put that on your invitation and your thank you cards. Um, and I really like doing fun projects like that. Okay, so I think the most fun project to dive into would be creating um, Instagram highlights covers in like a cohesive, in a cohesive little story. So let's do that. I really like the thing about Instagram stories highlights is that you can choose like what the cover will be, but I'm pretty sure it has to be a nine by 16 or 16 by nine. I forget which way to say it. So let's pick one of those. I'm actually going to, this is one of the tricks of creating templates. Thinking of what to search is one of the like biggest pieces in figuring out what templates to start with. So I'm looking for Instagram real covers. This like gave me some ideas of what I would like to create next but I'm not really seeing the type of templates that I want to create from here and remixing or sorry, resizing to the correct size is pretty straightforward. So what I actually am going to look for, I'm going to search for travel because I want to make a series of story highlights that I can use for um, different places that I've been when I collect them on my profile. So I'm gonna look and see if I can find something that is what I want to go from. Question in the chat, when you search for a template, how do you mark your favorite ones before you choose? What's the workflow that you follow? That's a great question. We get asked that a lot, the ability to favorite templates. It's not currently, an option. Um, I hope that I have a different answer for you someday, but I'll show you the workflow that I use. Okay. So like looking at this template, this could work for what we're doing right now, but I also just really like it. This, this template to me is like, okay, this could be for travel. This could also be like kind of a Polaroidy look, which I could just use on social at any time. Um, this is something I could just share like photos of my friends. So I'm going to click into this one. And then if we go into the share button up here, the project has to save for us to be able to share it. And while it's doing that, we'll have the option to save it into a library. I probably should have turned off the animation. That might be the thing that is bugging it out right now. Let's see if I refresh what happens. Um, sometimes the animation gets a little goofy and I didn't even know this was animated. Let's turn it off and see if we can do that. Okay. If I hit share while that saves, you can share your favorites into a library, which is my workaround for having a way to favorite templates. 
So I'll just save my favorites. Um, and you can also then kind of separate them, which is cool. So you can have a library that is like favorite, you know, template inspiration for Instagram stories or template inspiration for travel. So over here in share, I'm going to hit make a template and I will call this travel Polaroid, even though I know that's not exactly what it is. And all my libraries and shared libraries are here. So let's do favorite templates, save. And then if I go over here, home libraries, I can scroll and find my favorite templates. And if the stars align, yep, it's right here. So that is, that's a workaround. Um, hopefully I will be able to come back and announce a different workflow at some point if we have it, but that's my workflow for now. Um, and I think this is actually a great template to choose from. So thank you so much for asking that question. I want to use this as my Instagram highlights template to start because it has a, like photo front and center, which I think is a great thing um, to show off that like all of my different highlights are going to be from different places. And also we have the ability to write text along here. I'm going to show off one of my favorite tips for resizing. Um, oh, and I guess just to call that out, when you start a project, your design um, panel will open. And this is where all of your brands are. So if you want to switch brands, the default brand I have set in my brand kit is my like brand that I use for Adobe. But I'm going to switch it to the one we made for this week. So that's just how you can switch brands. In theory, you should call them things different than like my brands are my name over and over. So it's a little complicated. Um, please feel free to call them different things. You can actually tell. But I really like to highlight and group items before I hit resize. Sometimes they just get a little wild um, if you resize without grouping them they can move around. This particular template only has like three things on it. Um, so that wouldn't be that wild, but just that's my pro tip. So now over here on the right, we have a lot of options. Resize is one of them. And I want it to be an Instagram story size. So something that's really nice about Adobe Express is it's already sized for you. So I don't have to memorize like I actually probably do have the Instagram story um, dimensions memorized because I look at this all the time, but you can scroll down if you want it to be an in Instagram portrait for your feed instead, or you totally change your mind and you want it to be a Facebook post or a pin. Um, and we'll actually show how to resize this for multiple different things. But for now, we'll start with Instagram story. Okay, this is cute. And now we have a decision of like, do we keep this as is? How much are we going to change the template? And I think that's something that's really important to consider when you are choosing a template, especially if like me, you don't have um, a lot of design experience. Something that I'll say is that templates are really incredible to use as like a layout placeholder. Again, especially if that's not really your, your expertise. So if I open this template, change everything, and then the end result looks nothing like it, that's okay. But if I'm choosing this template because what actually drew me to it is like, it's a really clean layout, um, it's not too busy, you can really like tell what the focus of it is. If I then add like a bunch of animated stickers or five different fonts, that's going to change the reason I initially was drawn to this template, which is fine. Just that's one of my pro tips for like new designers is it's kind of a fun challenge to stick with what is actually here. Um, again, because these are designed by professional designers, so you can learn a lot about the choices they made by looking at it for your own template. So that's just one of my pro tips. 
Um, we're going to remix this for an Instagram story or a story on a highlight cover. I just went to Phoenix, so I'm going to remix this um, and I'll use it to have all my Phoenix stories. So first I'll ungroup. I'm going to change the text down here. What year is it? 2023. And I'm going to change this to create now Phoenix. Totally different question in the chat. Hi, how did you get started in your career as a community manager? Um, while I'm remixing this, I was a small business owner for 13 years. And um, I realized that my favorite part of running a small business was actually doing the marketing community management part and not doing the um, sales inventory taxes business side of running a small business. So I was like, cool, I really only want to do the community management part. Um, but if I stay an entrepreneur, then I will have to keep doing all of the other parts or I won't make any money. Um, so I started looking for a full-time career as a community manager. And I was so thankful that Adobe has like an incredible community team and also really thankful that Adobe has Adobe Express, which non-designers can use because I would never have been able to work here if I needed a design background. So the stars aligned um, for me, but I that is that was my career path. Um, so it's kind of fun to have all of this really wild, various experience over the past decade and a half. And I'm thankful to be in a spot where I can use a lot of it. So I did not go to anywhere that looks this beautiful when I was in Arizona, unfortunately, but this is a really gorgeous photo. And I think I've mentioned this in all of my streams this week, but one of the really cool superpowers of Adobe Express is that with an Adobe Express account, which you can use a totally free account, also has access to Adobe stock, which is like... On the premium account, it is over 160 million photos, which is like really, really massive. Um, there are so many ways that that can be used for personal brand reasons. I think one of the really powerful things is that like very likely you're not paying for a photo shoot for anything if you're using it for your personal brand. So if you have your own photos, that's great. You can also hit upload photo here from your device or you can sync photos from or sorry, upload photos from your own Adobe stock photos. If you have separately licensed things, your Lightroom, Dropbox, Dropbox, Google Drive and Google Photos. So that's really cool. But um, something that's I think really amazing is that the Adobe stock photos are here. So the ones with the crown are premium access, but especially for business owners too, doing a photo shoot can be expensive. It's really cool because you get, you know, personalized photos, but sometimes you just need a picture of like a beautiful place that, you know, this looks better than all the pictures I took in Arizona. Or if you're a blogger, sometimes you need posts of like lots of people baking and you don't have a thousand pictures of yourself baking or for my blog it's a lot of like tv movie recommendations books and things so making blog headers in adobe express and being able to use stock photos is super cool so please don't sleep on that um if you do projects like this i think that is great so this is my newly remixed Instagram story highlight. You can change the background. So if we want to make this a little more branded, we can use the gray from our brand. Could also change the text color to match. Actually, maybe we'll do this teal. That's fun. Um, so now this is branded. I'm move this down a little bit. That feels like it will match better. Um, there are two different ways that we can use this. One, we can duplicate this page to give us a second page. And then say we're like, okay, actually, 
I really made this for Instagram, but now that I'm seeing it, it would be really great if I made this into a Facebook post and then I can like share the link to the rest of the photos that I took, or this can be the first one letting folks know that I have like more photos for my vacation incoming. So I'm gonna go group these again, hit resize. And the thing that's really cool and special about Adobe Express is that you can make all of the pages of a multiple page template different sizes. So the first one was an Instagram story. This can be a Facebook post um, and it's almost perfect. I just need to bring it up from the edge a little bit, center it with those grids. And there we go. And then if I want, I can also, I'm gonna go back to the Instagram story because this will be easier. We can also make this into a pin so I can duplicate it. Like say I put together an album or a blog post. I can resize this into Pinterest dimensions. And again, like have to tweak it a little bit, but really, really it's not bad. And then let's do one more. Let's resize this into like a blog header. Um, there may not be a default cover for that, but at least if my old blog, my WordPress was 16, uh, yeah, 16 by nine is what I had it set as. This is what happens when you don't group your layers. They fly all over the place sometimes. Um, so for my blog post, I would actually probably delete this and let's crop and shape this just to make it mix it up a little bit. And let's do it. Let's do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is great. Make sure this is centered. Grab the text layer. Cool. Now this can be my blog, my blog post header. So that's one way to do it. Hello, Frank. Um, another option that you have is if you're like, okay, I love this for my Instagram stories. Let's do the same thing for different places that I've been. And then I'll kind of make a collection of my travels. You can also duplicate this. And let's think about, um, I went to LA last year for Adobe Max. And so let's pull in a stock photo from Los Angeles. Wow, it is so cold where I am right now. And this is making me really wish I was somewhere warmer. Let's do maybe one of the palm trees super stylized but i like this and you can also obviously if you're doing this for your own vacations use your own photos so that is one i think very fun way to use personal or to use templates for personal projects you can also just see everything together which is nice um so that is one if there are any ideas of other specific things you would like to see in the chat, please let me know. But otherwise, I am going to show off one of my other favorite personal projects, which is desktop backgrounds. Oh, we have another question about, um, oh, this is giving me literal backgrounds. That's funny. Let's do... So this is an interesting mix of... Yes, actually just showing off like backgrounds that are available in Adobe Express, but also these sort of like, let's do one like this. These are different ways to do, um, yeah, desktop backgrounds. I like switching these out a lot because I get bored of looking at the same desktop over and over. And this is not in like my brand at all so it'd be really fun to remix this and see what it looks like with a little more of you know my favorite colors um which is exactly what we made in this brand so i'm gonna click into these and all of these 
all of these circles must be design assets. You could also replace these with circle shapes um, and then you could edit the colors straight up. And just to show off, we are in my Adobe brand right now. So you can switch brands over here to have the colors that we made this week. And while I'm doing that, um, question in the chat, some of the biggest challenges you've faced as a community manager and how have you overcome them? Um, honestly, I think one of the hardest parts of working in like a public space at all is just pub like public interactions can be really hard and draining sometimes. If you're doing any type of customer service or community management, like there just are times when folks are mad at you, whether it's personal or not at the company. I mean, it's usually not personal um and you just have to like be pretty good at dealing with that and finding ways to like de-escalate problems and um and kind of focus on what you're actually there for so that's one of the hardest things is just managing um public expectations because if anyone has ever interacted <laughs> in that way before i mean even literally in the chat right now like Everyone here is super lovely and sometimes folks aren't. And that's just one of the hardest parts, I think. Um, so you get a tough skin, which is cool. I'm trying to remember. Mm, I was trying to think if we could find like a similar photo to the one we pulled these colors from. But actually, let's go into backgrounds. I think holographic is not the vibe I want for this, but the stationary backgrounds are some of my favorites. So maybe we can either find one like in this color palette or I think glitter is going to be too intense. Cool toned paper might be right. So we can find one that matches or we can do my favorite trick, duo tone. Oh, this might be, let's see. Yeah, I'm into this. Um, I am extremely into like tech uh, textured, I guess. I'm like textiles and also different paper textures. I'm always drawn to that. So this I really like. And then this is not our brand font. So I showed this off in day one, but when you have your brand set up, whatever fonts you've chosen are gonna be right here at the top, which is really cool. Yeah, this looks great. I like this. You can just scroll up to the top. And change all of these out. And this is just like really fun to see how different templates can look based on different brands. So actually, let's do a second one with my Adobe brand and we can just see like how different that looks. While I'm remixing that, um, lots of questions about community engagement, um, in the chat, which is cool. Actually, Andy Lambert and I do a get social stream every other week here on Adobe live. And we talk about this all the time. So search, get social in the Adobe express YouTube. Um, we have tons of videos and we like deep dive, but I forgot it was going to do that when I switched brands. It automatically changed my font for me. Thank you. That is a really cool trick that I forgot Adobe Express does. And then this, this may work. Okay. This panel is, I, I'm, I don't know. I have different, I have opinions about this. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't. So in there's a color shuffle button, which is pretty cool. What I will say is it works the best on projects that have lots of shapes and text, but not a lot of design assets and like photos. Sometimes it gets pretty chaotic too. Um, so you can scroll through and choose like a totally different type, um, a totally different color palette. I'm going to click this and see. Yeah, it's okay. What I prefer to do usually is replace them manually. Oops, not the image. I want to replace this. 
color here. So now I have a new color palette um, and I really want to pull in these colors. And you can change what the words say too. Um, so like, say this is for my personal computer and I actually don't want to work on here at all. I can change this to be, uh, let's do, how would I actually use this? This wouldn't be school. This would be maybe, I have a, I save a lot of recipes. So maybe this would be like meals and instead of work, this could be, man, to do is really the thing that I look at the most. Um, but this could be workouts, if that is like something that you're really into. And we can leave admin or like, uh, this is one of my favorite things is I just label a lot of things as important. And then I can figure that out as it comes. And then I actually will check out gradients here because I do a lot of rainbow E gradient E things in my Adobe Express projects. What is this going to look like? Let's see. Mm, maybe I want something so I can yeah, let me try something that's a little cooler. No. Almost. Maybe this. We're just gonna click on everything. Okay, I like that. Um, you can also use du the Duotone filter. So this is just kind of fun to see like using two different brands, how different this looks. Oh, this changed my font over here. Um, but it's the same template. Uh, question, do you have any advice on Facebook cover page templates for laptop versus on mobile? Oh, I struggle with them not looking that great on mobile. Gets cut out at places. Yeah, so that's an interesting thing about creating things for social media. Um, sometimes that's like a, that's a platform issue, which is really annoying. And also there are times where like, depending on how wide a window is, your banner will get cropped differently. So if you're looking on like, a big screen versus a smaller screen versus mobile. Um, the way that I combated that, actually, I'll just show off really quickly my Facebook. Um, what I did, this was made in Adobe Express off of a collage template um, because I wasn't kidding that that is the thing I'm most obsessed with right now. So I created something like this that like if it's cropped off differently, um, that works fine. So this one like actually has photos, which makes it a little more, I guess like that makes it a little harder um, to crop it. But I just took the pictures out for my YouTube banner. So you could maybe think about something like that, depending on what you're using for a banner. Um, you can make something that like doesn't have really intense edges. So like no matter how this window is formed, I, you know, no matter how this is cropped, it just kind of looks collagey um, and isn't taking out any important information. So that is maybe something I would consider um, if you're creating banners for different websites or different social platforms, if there's a way that you can, yeah, Tim says same for websites, if there's a way that you can make it so that either the most important thing is in the center where it won't get cropped, or like if you can kind of make the edges flex in a way that um, if they get cut, it is fine. Annika had a great answer too. Yeah. Stay away from the edges and leave some negative space around the profile pic. Yep. Great answers. Good teamwork, everyone. Um, okay. So that is one of my other 
personal projects, I'm going to show off one more series of things that I think Adobe Express is really great for that you can use in your personal life and personal projects, which is like invitations or cards. So I um, showed you all my murder mystery invitations already that I created, but let's try postcards. I really, really like using, um, I really like using postcard templates. You can get these printed for real. Like I turned this template into a holiday theme and legit sent it out as my Christmas card this year, or actually my New Year's card because I did not get it ready in time for holidays. But I also really like sending digital postcards. Like I just make these and text them to my friends um, because that's a lot easier and you don't have to print anything. Um, okay, thanks, thought I was missing something obvious. Yeah, so the templates are set up with the dimensions like we said like yes these are created by designers and the layout is like what's recommended by the social platforms but two frustrating things which you did call out is one sometimes social platforms change so like I've had a Facebook business page for I think 14 years and the number of times that like the dimensions of the sizes of different things have changed is so many um so sometimes like the platforms will just change uh, what they want and then also like you said sometimes the platforms look different in different places and that is just that is just part of it um which makes it yeah a little more complicated to figure out so you're, you're not missing anything or doing anything wrong sometimes getting things to look the right way online just takes a little um playing around with it but i think that postcards, invitations, cards, thank you cards. I think um, this is a really great thing in Adobe Express, like this wish you were here postcard. I can, um, I could use this to just like text to my friends. There are thank you cards, there are birthday cards. So I want to, Maybe we've been talking about travel. Let's do something like this. Um, yeah, this is really fun. Let's do something like this and just swap out what it is. So instead of saying greetings from Cuba, where should we go? This is making me think of like Italy. Let's make this roam. This stream is just me daydreaming about being anywhere. Um, so because this word is smaller, we have to get creative and move these around a little bit. Um, greetings from. And then if we want to use this, oh, I think. I was all caps. Um, if we want to like remix this and keep it cohesive, we're going to have to move those things around. And then another thing to pay attention to is when we choose a photo, like we found this area of sky right here. So looking at how this photo is laid out, if we want it to work the same way when we replace it, we'll just have to pay attention to that here. So let's search for realm and see what we can find um we can also like we could use this and just reverse it if we wanted but let me scroll a little more let's try this one cool yes that worked great um so obviously you could use your own you could use your own photos if you're actually on vacation, which is great. You can keep a template like this. Like I like to send images to my parents and grandparents when I'm traveling. So if I was doing this, I could keep this template and then just add a new page for every new trip um, and just swap out the words. Like that is really what templates are the best at. But you can also 
if you wanted, you could add a second page and then like create a postcard um, design on the back, which is super easy. We can do that really quickly. So we duplicated the page, can just delete this background image. We want this to be something printable. So it could either be straight up white or this. We'll have to change all the text to something darker. And then um, postcards are pretty easy. We can just use shapes, find a line, make this really thin. This will work, maybe a little thinner. That's as thin as we're gonna get. Mm. Yeah, cool. So you could swap this out for, um, you know, an actual return address. I am not going to do that right now. Leave space to write whatever little note you want. And then we can just duplicate this. Let's do, let's do four because if we're sending internationally, we might need a fourth line. Um, also, if you, you know, you can find all of the information about like exactly how postcards need to be laid out, but I have sent a lot of these um, in my day. We'll make a little stamp, a little stamp sized. Um, this is a fun thing with basic shapes. If you haven't played with them like relatively recently, it's kind of new. You can add a border. So we'll make this the same color as everything else. And then you can turn off the fill um, so it is just the shape on the outside, which is pretty cool. That looks a little big. Make that smaller. Hello, super happy made it to the stream this morning. Better late than never. You can catch the replay if you want, which um, is just on the Adobe Express YouTube. So please feel free to catch up if you would like. So this is like a super easy way to take a template um and just turn it into a postcard if you want to send like a letter to your friends you can also swap out you could change what this is really easily um so you can like say you want to make this a thank you card we will just duplicate this and swap out this photo for maybe maybe not a photo maybe something a little and space is really my favorite. Um, I'm such a sucker for galaxy pictures. I will make a little thank you postcard. Um, actually, you know what we can do? This will tie this up perfectly. We'll make a thank you card. I think maybe I wanna make this, oops, bigger. Nope, 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 not that. Group these, make this bigger. And then what we can do, get it centered, is add in our little switch the brand to the one we started with and add in this little smiley face so for that i want to switch out the background so that i can see it um or reverse it yeah cool we can switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. Um, so then, you know, you can just have multiple covers of different postcards you want. And when I switched the brand, it changed over here. That's really funny. Um, and then you can just download, you know, whatever you want. And this is just an example of some of the things that you can create in Adobe Express for your personal brand or personal projects. These are just a few things um, that I love making, but 
you can create phone backgrounds, you can create birthday party invitations, you can create worksheets, um, you can do like meal planning kits. There are so, so many things that you can create in Adobe Express. Um, and like I said, I just like searching through the templates. I like looking along the side, scrolling through the homepage. If you write an ebook, um, you can make calendars. Like there are literally unlimited options. And if there are any templates that you want to see more of, because I think there are so many different like ways to use Adobe Express, please feel free to find me and at me and let me know your ideas. Um, and we can try to get whatever you would like to see into the product, which is really cool. And um, if you want to follow the types of projects that I'm making, you can find me at Jordan Danae Ellis all over the internet. I share the projects that I make for, you know, hanging out in the community here at Adobe Express. Also my personal life, also my small business life. So I am making all kinds of things with no design background. Um, so feel free to follow along. Like I said, ask me any questions that you have. And um, for the questions about like small business and community building and stuff, please feel free to DM me and also check out the Get Social video series that I do with Andy Lambert because we answer all kinds of social media, small business brand questions. So thank you all so much. Stay tuned for day four of our Adobe Express Bootcamp tomorrow and have a great day. Bye.